No animal in Australia has captured so much imagination as the Tasmanian tiger. Its correct name is the thylacine. It is believed to be extinct since the 1930s, although every year there are fresh sightings and plenty of stories of encounters. But as yet, no photos or specimens have been taken. So for our 72 list, we cannot ignore the possibility that some may still survive. It's unlikely they would attack, and even with what we do know about them, most of the anecdotal evidence seems to suggest that like a large dog, they could bite or attack. But such incidents were rare. The Tasmanian tiger was at the top of the food chain, and it was, or is, the largest marsupial carnivore of modern times. Both the female and the male have pouches. The female pouch was back-facing and used for rearing of the young. The male pouch was for the protection of the testicles. Distinctive stripes covered the back half of their body. This was thought to give the illusion of dappled moon or sunlight. Thylacines seemed to prefer fresh meat and were intelligent hunters, working mainly at night and at dusk. Most of their prey were small rodents and marsupials, as well as introduced rabbits. Their jaw is long and the teeth sharp, not at all a place to put a human hand. The last thylacine, which is the species' correct name, died in captivity in July 1936. Sadly, protection of the species came two months later in September. By then, it was too late. This rare black and white vision shows the last tiger as it paces around its cage at the Bomara Zoo in Hobart. Today, that same cage sits empty, almost as a last testament to this unique and rare animal. Tasmania is heavily forested, with some areas so dense and harsh that to this day, there are still areas that the locals have not been able to access. Just outside of Hobart, in the Derwent Valley, the town of New Norfolk is home to the last great Tasmanian tiger searcher. Cole Bailey, author of Shadow of the Thylacine, is convinced beyond doubt that the tigers are still out there. Definitely, most definitely, 100% sure. No doubt in my mind. You know, there could be 10, there could be 20, there could be more, but there's not a lot. Those that are out there need to be uh, harnessed and, and brought in before it's too late, or they'll all be gone. To do that, you need reading pairs and uh, you find one, it's not much good without the, the mate. Science has told us they're extinct, but still people are continuing to look for this animal that supposedly doesn't exist. I'm telling you now, for, for the camera, it does exist, no doubt. A hundred years ago, they were all over the place, and people will find them at will. But nowadays, they know they're in danger. It's a, it's a sense they've, they've developed, and so they retreated way back in the back country. And the reason we don't see them now is because people never go into the areas that they're, they're in. And I've been in some of these areas, dropped in by helicopter and stuff, and you've really got to get back there to see it and believe it, how isolated. It's only a small island, but you lay it out flat, and it's, it's quite a big place. Uh, but there's so many mountains and, and rough country that people just don't go in there. Only dedicated, hardcore bush workers, and of course people with a motive like I've got. Cole believes he came face to face with one of the few remaining animals. It was in 1995 on an expedition into the dense forest of southwest Tasmania, one of many he had attempted before. But this time, what he saw changed his life forever. During the night, early hours of the morning, I heard these yips from further up the river. Now, the old fellas have told me that when the thylacine calls its young, it's got a high-pitched yip, yip, and they'll answer back and you'll get a double yip, and they call each other. And I heard this three or four times that night, and I thought, there's got to be something going on here. But the next morning, nothing prepared me for what was going to happen. I got out of my sleeping bag just on dawn, packed up, had a cold breakfast, a cup of tea. I didn't want to create aromas in case anything was around. And packed all my gear up, and I thought I'd have a quiet walk around. So I was standing there quietly relieving myself alongside the ferns, and out of the ferns come this animal. And it shot back again straight away, and I got round cattle lock because quite often hunters lose their dogs when they're hunting and the dogs turn feral. And I thought this was one of them. Now, I whistled this animal up and got no response and I moved on to a, a semi-clear wombat trail and then I could see it more clearly. I could see the head, ran down the body and the long sift tail. Then my eyes went back to the, the body and I seen these stripes and it turned and exactly as I've got on the book and that's why I've chosen this terrific drawing for the book and that's the way it's and glared back at me. 
And when it did that, I froze. I went into shock. It's like I was hit by a lightning strike. And I didn't know what to do. I thought for a while it was going to have a go at me because it, it snarled. Then it did something strange. It looked at me for some seconds and then it turned around and went to walk away and then turned all around in one piece and stood standing square on at me. And I thought, hello, it's going to have a go at me now. And I thought, oh, I'd, I've had it if it goes. I didn't know what to do. And I was, I was rock solid. I couldn't move. It stood there for another 20 or 30 seconds. And then it started to back back in a crazy side to side motion. And it reversed back until it got further back into the ferns and I could see it no longer. And then it disappeared and I could see the ferns moving where it was going away. And I was in shock. I knew what I'd seen. I was in no doubt about that. And what was I going to do about it? And then I thought, well, I'll better get my pack and go after it. So when I got back to my pack, I thought, ah, oh, what's the use? I sat down and had a real strong cup of coffee and got my thoughts together and my nerves settled down a bit. And then I thought, now I'll go and have a look for it. But there's so much forest litter, I couldn't see where it had gone. And it just disappeared. The Tasmanian tiger is a potent symbol for conservationists, and its loss glaringly symbolizes careless destruction of the natural world. In modern times, it is easily the highest profile species to have been lost. What we can take from this is all of our animals, and in particular our most dangerous, need protection.